what miracle were they looking for? They saw dangerous dimensions of God. But at the slightest opportunity, they bowed to bow. They committed adultery with Ashtaroth. Number three thing you would have learned about choice during these three days is that choices are like seeds. Every choice you make is a seed. You sow it into the earth. You sow it into the spirit. You sow it into your life. So every time you are faced with two options and you choose one, what you have done is that you have planted a seed into your future. Some will germinate immediately. Some it might take 15 years. The first time somebody gave me a pornographic magazine, I was 10 years old. How old was I? I can't hear you. How old was I? How old are you? You are 10. I was exactly your age. How old are you? 10. I was exactly your age. How old are you? 11. So you are older than, you are older than how I was that time. Not older than me now. <laughs> 10 years old. A friend, a friend gave me a pornographic magazine. And then I looked at it. It didn't take more than 15, 20 seconds. It took me 15 years to be delivered. 15 years. To say, ah, I'm free. 15 years. That's how long. Because your choices are what? They are seed. So as you walk out of this conference and you make a choice, you make a choice. Just know that you are planting that seed into your future. Either it will become a, a tree of life or it will become a tree of what? Death. Because the believer is alive. The unbeliever is what? Dead. Brethren, I'm saying this to say to you that these two lines will never cross. So the way we determine right or wrong, good. And by the time you read through the Bible carefully, God is always crying, be ye separate. Be ye what? Preach it to a teenager by your side. Say this year, this year. after this conference, for the rest of your life, be separate. be separate. Let the world, preach to your teenager, let the world, See your difference. See your light. Experience your Jesus. That's how a Christian lives. So if you look at it carefully, in the Christ line, you have lawful. This person obeys the laws of God. They are controlled by the laws of God. Those laws affect what he watches. Affect who his friends are. Affect how she dresses. Affect what she loves. Affects how she relates with her parents. The laws of God. What is the second thing after righteous? What is the next thing on your table? Light. This one is a carrier of light. What is the next thing under your table? Christ. This one has Christ living in his spirit. What is the next thing under your table? Temple of God. So when you meet him, he's a mobile house of the presence of God. Are you with me? He's the temple of the living God. Paul said, can I take what is God's and join it to a harlot? You are the temple of the Lord. He said, God forbid. So when you find a teenager that is masturbating, it's because the teenager does not know I am the Lord's house. When you find a teenager that can sit down, my parents have left the house, then they go and bring out, they go and bring out uh, 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 a strange movie and they are watching it imagine this thing I'm about to tell you you are the house of the Lord it means that wherever you are the Holy Ghost is there Jesus is there God the Father is there imagine sitting down watching naked video and the Holy Ghost is with you are you here 
you and Holy Ghost. Ah. You and Holy Ghost. He said, there's nothing wrong with it. Not Temple of the Lord. Can Holy Ghost watch that thing with you? That thing that you have in your phone, can Holy Ghost watch it with you? When your parents have gone, then you, then you put twer, 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 twer. You are Holy Ghost. You and Holy Ghost. If you are not the temple of the Lord, you become a temple. What's the opposite there? Idols. Idols. So before we begin to prepare to pray, to pray because we are going to pray. Ask yourself, who are you carrying? Is it, have you become a mobile house of idols? Or you are carrying Jesus. Jesus. You see, brethren, Satan knows that if you don't make this separation early, he will damage you early. I had to bend my head at some point while Pastor Jude was leading prayers because I was crying. You know why I was weeping? My entire life flashed before my eyes. I'm a product of God's mercy. Why should I even be the one standing here to preach to you people? Mercy. Satan, bro, how old are you? Eh, you're 15. I don't know why I'm interested in you. Every time I look at you, I seem to see light. God wants to do great things with your life. Have they told you before? I'm seeing it. Great things with this your life. If you hear this teaching I'm saying to you, you will not make my mistakes. Eh? You see, separation makes you powerful in the hand of God. Because the more separated you are, the more you can host God. Bro, Satan damaged me early. I got into boarding house when I was eight. Yes. I wrote primary six exam from primary four. And passed. And they said, go to boarding house. I went to boarding house at eight. A senior walked into my net. In the night. Huh? And dragged me to his bed. I was eight years old. And homosexually abused me. I was eight. He did things to me that he now I'm ashamed. I, I feel pain. I feel if not that, if not that I am a candidate of mercy. I still feel as if why did God allow this thing happen to me? I was eight. All kinds of things made me do all kinds of things. I was shaking like a leaf. I was afraid. I was bigger than me. Many years my senior. I was in GSS 1. He was in SS 3. When I went to school, the last set of people, because originally, you may not believe, but ask your parents. Originally, when you finish class five in those days, you now go to what is called standard six. You do an extra two years. I met the last set of those people. So in my, in my, in my school, I was in a school called Government College Ugeli. Government College Ugeli. So while other students wore white on white, those higher students who had finished but needed to do extra years wore white with brown. I met the last set. He dragged me in there. I was weak. I was powerless. You know what Satan did? He damaged me. I was just eight years old. Eight. You see, what, what, what I want to do this morning, eh? while I was praying, God kept telling me he wants to heal broken souls. Damage me. By the time I was 10, I was introduced to porn. By the time I was 12, I had my first sexual intercourse. The lady I slept with was 27 years old. 
Yes. Yes, I was 12. So here I am. Father, nowhere to be found. My mother was raising four children by herself. Laboring. Trying to bring us to know Jesus the best way she could. But yeah, I was damaged. Damaged. Every time I tried to reach for Jesus, pull me back. Every time. It was almost... <laughs> I'm stronger than him. I'm stronger than him. Every time I tried, Egypt will be dragging me back. You can't escape. There were times in my room by myself, I will cry. Help me, Jesus. That's how immorality became a part of my life. And you know the funny thing? I could not tell anybody. You see, dear teenager, dear child, this morning, this is what the Holy Ghost told me to come and ask you. Even if you cannot tell anybody, will you not tell Jesus? Will you not tell Jesus? Because you see, if Satan succeeds in breaking your soul early hmm? you can become 55 with a broken soul some of you see it with your fathers any small thing he has slapped your mother it's not him his soul is broken he's a broken man some of you see it with your mothers they shout they treat your fathers anyhow your house there's no peace is because two broken people are now married. They didn't have an opportunity of a teenager's conference where they could come out and say, ah, oh, Jesus, even if I've never told anybody, please, I'm broken. Heal me. I was in a teenager's, God bless you, brethren, sit down, sit down, sit down. I was in a teenager's conference many years ago. Many years ago. Many years ago. And then, I was teaching something around this area. I was talking about covering your sin and exposing secret sin. And then when it was time to pray, I stood at the edge like I like standing normally. And then I was just praying, calling people to the altar. A young girl came. She was 12 years old. I never forget it. It's etched on my memory. 12 years old. And she held my leg. You know how the protocol, as I started moving, he got up. You know protocol people? One of them ran and they heard her. I said, leave her alone. She was crying. That kind of cry that Kata is coming from the nose. Crying. Ah -ah. So I bent. I said, beloved, what is the issue? She screamed from her soul. He will not leave me alone. Ah -ah. He will not leave me alone. He will not leave me alone. Uh -uh. So I said, take her to the corner. They found out that when her mother leaves the house, there's a man in the compound. He was 27, I'll be 28. He will drag her into his room. And sexually abuse her. She had lost her virginity. He had touched her in all parts. She was traumatized. She had never told anybody. But that day, she heard the voice of God and she made a choice. I will rather, rather tell Jesus than remain broken. Hmm. If only, you see that's why I am, I am vehement against the way church is run now in modern day. It angers my soul. I used to go to church hoping that somebody would tell me to tell Jesus. And the preacher was telling me about breakthrough. How money is coming. And I was a broken boy. I would come to service. Sometimes I would have cried in the night. I don't know the young lady I saw when I was praying. 
Because I joined my people, we are doing well on a, we are on a 120 day fast. So I joined them for the vigil. And while I was praying, I saw a young girl. She was crying. God told me she would be here today. She was crying. The words of her cry were, help me, I'm alone. I'm alone. Young lady, I came to tell you I was alone too. The only reason I have hope and I can stand here today is that one day came, I was no longer afraid to tell Jesus. I didn't care what any other person was thinking. I came out and I said, Jesus, I can't hide it again. My soul is broken. And Jesus said, put your hand in my hand. The minute I made that decision, my life shifted. I still stumbled once in a while. But I now had meaning. I now knew that even though I was homosexually abused, I'm not a homosexual. I now knew that even though immorality had finished me, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. I raised my head. before. If you see, my back is bent. That's how I used to walk on the road. I was ashamed to look at people eye to the eye. I didn't have any worth in myself. This is how I used to walk on the road. That's why I became very creative. If I write drama for you now, I've done a lot of drama scripts that have been big screens on YouTube. People have acted my dramas here and there. Yes. Yes. I became very creative because I used to talk to myself. I used to talk to myself. My only friend was myself. Sometimes I will imagine myself in the future and I will cry. I hated my father. The man that abandoned us to suffer, I hated him. But one day I came, I said, I'm broken. I'm broken. I'm broken. If Satan succeeds in breaking your soul, you become a grown man. That brokenness you will transfer it to your wife. Some of you, your father is not bad, though. he's broken. He's broken. And he did not heal. He's transferring all the pain and his anger to your mother and to you people. He's not a bad man. The day you will know he's not a bad man is the day he meets Jesus and Jesus heals him. You now say, Kai. So to get father sweet like this, the problem is that he's still in the lineage of Adam. And in Adam, there are broken men broken women one young boy reached me from somewhere in the middle belt I don't want to give details because my messages travel very far and he was crying he, at the time he reached me he was now 20 something years old I can't remember but the messages are still there 20 something years old his brokenness started in his compound his compound the woman with four children living in his compound when her husband traveled she called him one evening he was 16 i'll be 17 years old she called him one evening say my back my back is paining me he's paining me please come and help me massage it innocent young boy auntie is calling me to massage her back so he entered i'm telling you life story and then he helped her massage the back. As he was about to go, she caught him. And said, lie on top of me. Then he lay on top of her. That's how his brokenness started. Every day she would call him, come and lie on top of me. And he would be rubbing his private part against her body. She would not remove her clothes though. And she would tell him not to remove his own clothes. That thing had gone on till he was 20 something years old. The day he was telling me on the phone, I was crying. Satan is wicked. Satan is wicked. Now the woman is living her life. The young man is broken. When he was calling me, he said, I don't know what to do. I, I'm finished. I'm dead. I'm dying. 
Pastor, help me. I even told him to send me the woman's picture. I was planning to travel to come and find her. How can you do this to a young boy? He, she was even telling him that the day you remove my clothes, because when he gets so excited in the process, he now wants to go further. She said, the day you remove my clothes, you die. In our culture, if a woman sleeps with another man, the man will die. So she tortures him. She tortures him. The boy is a slave. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. You see, before we begin to pray, to address our families and to pray for our lives, I came for people that are going to say, I'm tired of hiding. I want to tell Jesus. You know, when I got married, I was telling one of my daughters here some, just yesterday when she came to see, see us and we we're talking about her own marriage and stuff, I was sharing with her. That's it. The first years of my marriage were turbulent. Me and my wife, we fight over everything. Every, I was a broken man. I was so angry. The anger in my soul was, how, where was God? This one abused me. 27 year old girl did not see any boy to sleep with. He's a 12 year old. I was damaged and that damage drove me into the world drove me so far but one day I made a choice I said it's enough you remember the three lepers how many of us have read that story I think it is 2nd King 7 I can't remember if you've read that story that there were three lepers or were they four now the Bible says that they made up their mind one day they said why sit we here until we die? Is that Second Kings 7? Who knows their Bible? Let's find it. I want to read that scripture. Oh, your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Your grace, your grace shines on me. Oh, I'm trying to find this scripture. It's seven, right? Yes. There were four. Listen. Now there were four men with leprosy sitting where? At the entrance. I want you to notice. They were at the entrance of the city gate. They could not go inside. They could not stay there. Because sitting at the entrance gates, they were like beggars. People will even be avoiding them. We don't have the time. I would have shown you in Leviticus. A leprous man was ostracized. Nobody touched him. Even his own family could not touch him. They were sitting at the entrance of the gates. Then one of them said, Ah! Why stay here until we die? Why? I don't know the young boy, the young girl. Why stay there until you die? Why? God has given you three days of encounter. Three days. All you need to do is like these lepers. Make a choice that enough is enough. Young lady, one young man is touching your body, abusing you sexually. You've not told your parents. I dare you to tell Jesus today. And end it. That woman told that boy, the day you remove my clothes, you die. This man said, why sit we here until we die? Go to the next verse. We will starve if we stay here. But with the famine in the city, if we even go back, we will starve. Many of us can't go back to the world. We have already chosen Jesus. If we go back, we die. If we stay here, we die. Why don't I embrace Jesus and die? If it is death and we die in following Jesus, why not just follow Jesus? That was their decision. They said we might as well go out and surrender to the Aramean army. 
If they let us live, so much the better. But if they kill us, we would have died anyway. The good thing about Jesus is that the day you become sincere with him, you think you will die from shame. You think you will die from oppression. But he will say, let Reuben live and not die. That's why the Bible says that he has come that you might have life and have it how? Abundantly. Let Reuben live and not die. Don't go back to Egypt. As you are leaving this conference, make sure like those lepers, you are making your mind. I'm going forward. The abuse, the rejection. I don't know, God gave me those three words. He said, broken souls. Many are broken because of abuse. Many are broken because of rejection. Many, let me get the last one that he gave to me. There were three, three clear words he spoke to me. Three clear words. They are broken because they have been bullied. Bullied. Some of you, your father told you that he doesn't want you. I have one of my sons in worry. His father and his mother had sex and they gave birth to him. He has been living by himself for as long as I can remember now. The mother dumped him somewhere. He now found out where his father was. He now went there to go and see the father. Traveled all the way from Wari to Potako to see the father. The father was married with other children in the house. And they put him outside the house like a vagabond. Mother rejected him. Father also rejected him. He's living now. No father, no mother. Broken. Sometimes when I want to discipline him very hard, when he does some very stupid things, I want to discipline him. I'll not remember. He's a broken soul. If we to drive him, where will he go? Maybe you are here, you don't even have father. I was like that. My mother raised us by herself. And the thing has made you broken inside. God can heal you. My last scripture. Deuteronomy 30, give me verse 15. Shine on me. Oh, shine on me. Shine on me. Your grace. It shines on me, shines on me, shines on me. It's your grace, shines on me, shines on me. Your grace, it shines. speaking to the children of Israel. This is my last scripture that I'm going to lead us to pray. And you see, I pray I don't have utterance to say many of the things that are burning in my heart. I pray you will not miss this opportunity. Don't come and be 50 and you are transferring your broken soul, the pain of your, your, your disobedience, the pain of your of your brokenness to your children. Your children are now growing up in a home that lacks peace, lacks joy. Because their father is broken. Or their mother is broken. Young lady, somebody is touching your body and you have not told anybody. You need to tell Jesus today. So that you can be healed. It can end. That 12 year old girl I was telling you about, we were the ones that called her mother. She kept saying, I can't tell my mommy. I can't tell my mommy. You know, I, I lecture in a higher institution. I preached in a meeting where all the students gathered. When I finished on my campus, a young lady walked into my office. She was 22. She walked into my office. She said, I've been looking for you everywhere. 
She said, I listened to you on Sunday when you preached to us. I came to tell you I hate my mother. I said, what did happen? What? What did your mother do? Her father died. Her mother married another man. The man will sneak into her room in the night and rape her. I'm telling you life story. Raped her. One day she could not take it anymore. I wish parents were here. So she boldly went to her mother and said, your husband is raping me. The mother slapped her. Say, it's you that wants to scatter my marriage. You want to scatter my marriage. I don't blame the woman. She's broken. But you know what she has used her brokenness to do? She used her brokenness to break her child. The girl was sitting in front of me now, weeping that day. He said, now, I can't stop committing sexual immorality. She was sleeping with anything they call a boy. Whether the person baffle, you know baffle, whether he smells nice, or whether he smells dirty, she, 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 she had become a slave of sexual immorality. A broken woman broke her own child. Broke her own child. Her cry to me in the office that day was, I heard you say it on Sunday. Can God heal me too? I said, yes. I too was broken. But my own soul has been arranged. You see, if we need to, see mommy Ogidi here, there are mommies here. If we need to call your parents for you and tell them on your behalf, we will do so. But to leave you broken, God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. If Satan succeeds to keep your soul broken, he can determine your future. God forbid that you leave this conference broken. God forbid. So what did Jesus, what did God do? What did God do? He said, now listen. He called them to a meeting. He called Israel. He said, today I'm giving you what? I can't hear. I'm giving you what? Between what? Between what? What's the next thing? Between what? And disaster. What is he giving them? A choice. Not money. A what? A choice. Not a car. Oh, my parents don't have car. If the future will change, your choices must change. The matter is who have you chosen? What have you chosen? He said, I gi I'm giving you a choice. Go for that. Go to the next verse. I think we are going to verse 18. Keep going. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to do what? His decrees and regulations by walking how? In his ways. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Libaru Kovanati. Don't be lawless. Don't be lawless. Be righteous. Keep his commandments. Keep his decrees. Keep his regulations. And walk in his ways. He says, if you do this, what will happen to you? I can't hear you. What will happen to you? And what? And what? And the land you are about to enter and what? So he will not just bless you now. He will bless your future. The land you are about to enter. Next verse. But if your heart does what? Turns away. And you refuse to what? Listen. And if you are drawn away to do what? Serve and worship other gods. What will happen? Then I warn you. Now that you will what? You will certainly be what? You will not live what? A long good life in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. The last verse. Give me 19. Today, I have given you what? Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. Read it loud.
that you may choose life that you and your descendants may live do you know bro that the cycle of struggle can end with your parents if you choose life you your siblings your own children will live notice what did Jesus do he came and he said before them life and death let me tell you the last thing about choice when it comes to the matters of choice Satan cannot force you to choose him are you hearing what I'm saying Satan cannot force you to choose him even God cannot force you to choose him he said I said before you life and death he said but what choose life he said, I'm counseling you. Choose life. I can't force you, but choose life. The thing about choice, Satan can't force you. God can't force you. It means if you see somebody doing anything, it's not Satan that made them to do it. Are you hearing me, beloved? Somebody lied. He says it's the devil. It's not the devil. Oh. Satan cannot force you to do anything you don't want to do. The choice is always yours. Bow your heads. Oh, I was lost, but you found me. Mm, and pulled me near. Who knows that song? Ah, na, na, na. I'll be a fool. I'll be a fool. A devil king of love. You gave me eyes. So I could see. You gave me a song. You gave me a song. To color the sky. To color the sky. I can't remember the word. All of you, that's right. It's all from you. Your grace. Your it's your grace. grace. Your grace. I'm nothing. I'm nothing without you. Grace. Grace. Your grace. Shines on me. Shines on me. Hey, Kabola Mana. Your grace, your grace, your grace. I am nothing without I'm you. I'm nothing without you. Your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace shines on me. Your grace, 
shines on me. Wherever you are seated, talk to Jesus now. Don't be shy. Tell him what you need to tell him now. Talk to him. That young lady I saw in my hotel room. I saw you in the spirit. You've been crying. I'm alone. I'm alone. Nobody understands. I'm alone. Can you talk to Jesus now? Your soul is broken. You are in pain. Abused. Rejected. Bullied. With a broken soul. But you want to be healed. Talk to Jesus. The question he sent me to ask you. Will you tell me? Will you tell me? Will you tell Jesus? You can hide it from mommy. You can hide it from daddy. You can hide it from your teens pastor. But you can tell Jesus. I woke up one day and I said, I must tell Jesus this matter. I can't continue like this. I need to tell Jesus. Before I die like this, let me tell somebody. But I can't tell a man. I need to tell Jesus. 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 I don't know who I'm speaking to now. Young boy, tell Jesus. Teenager, tell Jesus. Young girl, tell Jesus now. They have touched your body. They have abused you. You are hurting. You are dying. Tell Jesus. Tell him. Lesbians have abused you. Homosexuals have abused you. You know you are broken inside. You cry when nobody is there. You wail when nobody is there. You come to church and you pretend like everything is okay. But you are dying. You are dying. Tell Jesus. I want to give you five minutes to open your heart and tell Jesus. Tell Jesus. Tell Jesus. Ame Kamu. Kabila Mane Kebula. Jesus, I have never told anybody before. But I cannot hide it again. I'm dying. I'm bleeding. I'm hurting. I can't continue. My soul is broken. I don't want to be lawless. I don't want to be a son of Belial. I don't want to be a temple for idols. Help my soul. Heal my broken soul. You said a broken and a contrite heart. You will not despise. Now I have become addicted to sex. Now I have become addicted to pornography. Because somebody broke me. Somebody touched me and broke me. Somebody said things to me and broke me. My own father broke me. My own mother broke me. My uncles broke me. My parents are dead. But I've been living with my auntie. My auntie has broken me. I don't have a self-worth anymore. I'm no different from a slave. I'm no different from a prostitute. Lord, help me all. Young boy, they told you your father rejected you. They told you your mother cannot be found. You don't even know your father. You don't know your mother. The people you are living with are treating you like trash. Treating you like you are not a human being. You can tell Jesus. You can tell Jesus. Say, Jesus, I'm just 14. But I'm bleeding. I'm dying. I'm in pain. Help me now, Jesus. Help me. This preacher said you helped him. Will you not help me also? The Bible says you are not partial. If you did it for one, you can do it for another. Jesus, help me now. Jesus, help me also. Jesus, help me. You that helped evangelists. You that helped him, help me. You that helped him, help me. You that helped him, help me. Pray. Pray. Nobody is listening to what you are telling Jesus. It's between you and Jesus. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. I'm giving you enough time to pray. 
so that you will not say you were not given a choice you have the opportunity now talk to Jesus I'm nothing without you Jesus if you don't heal me I'll remain broken if you don't touch me I'll keep dying but I don't want to leave this conference like this I don't want to end up broken I'm a man and I'm broken I'm a woman and I'm broken. No. I've watched my broken mother abuse my father. I've watched my broken parents abuse us as children. I don't want to end up like that. Have you till my dying day? But I'm broken. I'm broken. Satan can take advantage of my brokenness. He can finish me with my brokenness. But you can heal me. You can heal me. You can walk on me again. You can heal my broken heart. Daddy, I've cried. I've cried. I've cried. Daddy, please, Cassiana cries. He, Daddy, please, Cassiana cries. He, he, we cannot afford to be damaged goods. He, Lord, he, Lord, he, Lord, he, Lord. about everybody bow your heads close your eyes I've been abused I've been rejected I am broken I want to be healed this is not everybody I saw people sexually abused that God is going to be healing today sexually abused I'm sexually abused. I'm broken. I'm broken. But I want Jesus to heal me. Homosexually abused. Your parents abandoned you. And rejection has overwhelmed your soul. As I'm speaking now, I'm seeing someone. That the spirit of depression has put a cloud over your life. You pretend like you are happy, but depression wants to finish you. The person I'm speaking about, your parents are no longer alive. When you are alone, all you do is cry. You weep. You don't know where the pain is coming from, but you are in pain. I am abused. The reason I'm calling everybody together is so that those people that refuse to close their eyes, I don't know what they are looking at. They will not know why you are coming out. I've been rejected and rejection is killing me. I have been abused and I'm broken. Sexually abused and I'm tired of hiding. 
I want Jesus to heal me. You stand on your feet and come. Stand on your feet and come. Stand on your feet and come. I'm waiting for you. Come. Come. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Come. Come. I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of hiding. Come. I'm waiting for all of you. Come. Don't hide now. Just come. I assure you we are going to treat your matter confidentially. We are RCN. We are not, we are not, we are not local people. It's for this cause we were born. It's for this cause God anointed us. I want to pray specific prayers for you and then I will, we will usher you to the teens leaders. If I can get your names, I'm going to keep praying for you till Jesus calls me home. Because I'm you and you are me. I fought my own battles. I didn't have the opportunity like this. I had to become a man early by myself. Some of the things I say on the pulpit, my mother will be hearing it for the first time if she's listening to this message. She didn't know. I was a broken man. Destroyed. But Jesus helped me. Open your mouth now and tell him once again. Daddy, I kneel before you. Without pride, I'm broken. Heal me. Then tell him the things you have never told anybody. Tell him. That was what I kept hearing in my prayer closet. Will you tell Jesus? If you dare to tell Jesus, you will see what will happen. If you are not coming out where you are, be praying. Be praying as your head is bowed. Be praying. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, my Lord. I want to make you proud. I want to bless your heart. Jesus, my love, oh. Jesus, my love. Be praying where you are seated. Speak in tongues. Exercise your spirit because we are going to move into another dimension where the Lord will break yokes off people's necks. Where the Lord will heal. He will lay his hands upon people. you in front don't look at anybody a lot of you are weeping i understand i wept too i cried like this i put down my pride and i cried before him i said lord i can't hide it again i'm broken Eko bele kabila na 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 mai, zakros kabina kabote, la bote le vali la dode, ya ba 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 ba, la bila bore bariado, la mako bela milade, iko ba 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 ba, la mana mana go bela, e ba 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 ba, la bote le vali la go bela bola bila bore ado. Is a ba 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 bole, la bia bole, bia bole, la bia bole, yando kabila sakoda bolare, ida bole kaboda, 
Thank you, Jesus. The things I'm hearing in my spirit are not for public consumption. See, and the Lord is showing me that some of the young ladies that are here is their fathers that broke them. The Lord is showing me their fathers. And what the Lord is saying, listen, listen. You see, those of you in front, you are the main reason I'm in this meeting, this session. This is, this, this is why he sent me. If Satan succeeds in keeping you broken, he can determine your future. He can damage it. I'm going to give you two more minutes to pray. And this one you are praying, you need to forgive the person that broke you. You need to forgive. Call the person's name. If you don't remember the name, forgive the person. If you have hated your parents because they abandoned you, say, I forgive my daddy. I forgive my mommy. Say it. Forgive. If not, Satan will use it against you. I had to come to a place. It took me years. I had even graduated from the university when the Lord came to me and said, Kesena! Or oh, I think I just entered also. Had I entered or leaving? And he said, If you want to go far with me, forgive your father. He was just a broken man. He didn't know what he was doing. He abandoned you people, but it was not intentional. Forgive your father. That forgiveness brought a dimension of healing. Forgive now. Even if the person is still alive and you are going to see the person when you get home, forgive now. Forgive now. Say, Lord, I forgive him. I forgive her. I release the hurt from my soul. Even though the person made me feel useless. Even though the person made me feel worthless. Even though the person broke me. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive now. I let the person go from my heart. I let the person go from my heart as part of my healing process. From today, because I have told Jesus what broke me, when I rise on my feet, I'm rising brand new. Oh, Sada Bolena. <laughs> Satan, you have lost already. You have lost. You have lost. You have lost. Shada Boko. You have lost. You have lost. The devil has lost. He has lost over you. He thought that he will use your brokenness to damage your future. But he has lost. He has lost. He has lost. He has lost. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Lord, behold my brothers, my sisters. Your children, they are all kneeling before you. Some of them have been weeping since they knelt here. Lord, you helped me. I pray that that same grace be extended to my brothers and sisters that are kneeling before you now. I pray that every broken soul be mended in the name of Jesus. Every gate Satan was hoping to exploit every gate satan was hoping to take advantage of to destroy their futures to damage their present lord such gates are closed permanently in the name of jesus we take that authority from the devil and we render him impotent regarding these ones in the name of jesus lord 
as we engage them, as we pray for them, this brokenness will have no implication anymore in their lives. From now, they rise brand new. They rise purged. They rise encouraged. They rise strengthened. Holy Spirit, you will begin to quicken them from the inside. A new fire will be lit within their spirits. From this moment, oh God, they will become burning and shining lights. Lord, the kingdom, your